Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid mechanics. This video is about conservation of angular momentum. So in this video we are going to apply the conservation of angular momentum only in the differential form because the integral form it can be used and there is a uh, problem in the example sheet in which you must use the integral form but for going forward we only need the result from the differential form so you will uh, recall that the definition of angular momentum is uh, x the position vector cross product with linear momentum so therefore its density and actually all quantities related to angular momentum are the position vector crossed with the corresponding linear momentum quantity. For example, the density of angular momentum is x crossed with the linear momentum density, uh, which is also written in index form on the right hand side. The volumetric source of angular momentum, there is no independent volumetric source of angular momentum. It comes from the body force, the torque exerted by the body force and to find the torque again you take a cross product with the position vector x and similarly the surface source this is the same uh, force that acts on the surface from the neighboring fluid uh, the torque because of that is simply x crossed with the stress tensor so this gives if, if you do an area uh, integral on the surface of this quantity you would get the net torque exerted by uh, the surface force on uh, our volume omega. So simply substituting this into the uh, differential form of the conservation equation leads to this equation. Now for uh, convenience I've used the, the form in index notation because in what follows the index notation is the most um, forthcoming. So because of the special structure of the relation between linear momentum and angular momentum, we can now split this equation into two. In the first part, we are going to pretend that we are going to use the product rule for differentiation and in the first part, we are going to take the terms where the xj, where the xj comes from this moment arm from the cross product, we are going to keep that constant and take it out. And epsilon ijk is a constant uh, tensor as so long as differentiation is concerned, so it comes out of the derivatives anyway. So written, writing that outside, the remaining terms are written here. And when differentiating xj, we get a non-zero terms from uh, two terms. One is this one, which is written there, and the derivative del xj del xm is written outside, and the second comes from there. Oh, let me write parenthesis outside this. And because angular momentum is so closely related to uh, linear momentum, what we find is the first term is essentially the cross product of the position vector with momentum conservation equation. And because momentum is conserved, this term goes to zero and we don't get anything from the first term, we are left with only the second term. Even in the second term, you will notice that del xj del xm is nothing but delta jm is equal to 1 when j equals m and is equal to 0 otherwise and that leads to further simplification and that simplification is that uh, one can uh, simply replace the m inside this bracket with the j because the m is a repeated index sum over m means there are three terms m equals 0 1 sorry m equals 1 2 or 3 and only the term corresponding to m equals j survives and therefore it is equivalent to just replacing m with j and ignoring the delta j m. So that's what I have here for the first term and here for the second term. Now you'll remember in the support session 
in the first support session, uh, we discussed a prob problem about uh, uh, contraction of two tensors with certain symmetries and that applies here. For example, if I consider this tensor UJ, U, sorry, UK, UJ, right? so that is a tensor with two indices, it's a second rank tensor and it is a symmetric tensor which means if I interchange J and K, I get the same expression back. But epsilon IJK in JK is an anti-symmetric tensor. When I interchange J and K, I get a negative sign and a contraction of such tensor, an anti-symmetric tensor with a symmetric tensor is zero. And because of that, the first term goes to zero. And the second term is in fact not too different. But here we are, we are talking about the converse. Right? Now, because the first term is zero, we are left with the second term. And now we have proved that the contraction of the stress tensor with epsilon ijk is zero. We know epsilon ijk is anti-symmetric and an inescapable consequence of this is that the stress tensor is symmetric, which means if you interchange the indices j and k, you get the same uh, value back. This is one of the problems in your example sheet to prove this, but it is really not that complicated. You can simply enumerate all possibilities and get to uh, this answer. So in words, the result is that the Cauchy stress tensor, uh, from now on I'm just going to call it the stress tensor, the stress tensor is symmetric in its components. Right? It's a second rank tensor which satisfies this equality. This is an important result. Uh, we are going to use this result throughout this module. Uh, and in fact, Yes, no, that, that is correct. And uh, uh, apart from that, there will be few uses of conservation of angular momentum. Although the principle is extremely powerful and when you know what you're doing, the principle of conservation of angular momentum gets you to the answer very, very quickly. Uh, in this module, we are not going to emphasize those kinds of problems so much. There is one problem on conservation of angular momentum that's in the in one of the example sheets that which you will see. But uh, apart from that, the main result is what we covered in this video. So thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next video or in the next live session.